Hello and welcome to Battletech Faction Briefings. Today, we continue our tour of the Free Worlds League by looking at the 10th Merrick Militia. They are one of the core units that make up the Merrick Protectors, a mercenary unit from the Dark Age era. Unlike the previous militia unit I covered, the 18th, this unit has a long tradition of heroism and has a much better battle record. If not for the 10th Merrick Militia, the Merrick Protectors may never have existed. Now, let's jump into the story of the 10th Merrick Militia. Their symbol is a hammer striking an anvil. This is a very distinct image and represents their nickname, the Hammers. Like other Merrick Militia units, this image is placed on the right shoulder, with the traditional Merrick Militia banner set on the left shoulder of the mech. As with all Merrick Militia units, they use a purple color scheme with red highlights on the right and blue highlights on the left. However, during the Third Succession War era, their colors changed to only using red highlights. This was due to the skill of the Condition Red Assault Battalion, which functioned as their vanguard strike force. Their reputation was so good, they were allowed to just use the red highlights for their mechs, as opposed to other members of the Merrick Militia who had to stick with the standard coloration. Upon becoming the first Merrick Protector Regiment, they maintained their traditional color scheme. Thus, even after the fall of the Free Worlds League, a mech commander can use their 10th Militia units as first protectors, adding some extra value to painting up this unit. Despite a long history, there is no fiction that I could find while doing research for this video. However, if you would like to avoid sourcebook spoilers, then skip to the time listed. Formed in the early days of the Free Worlds League, the Merrick Militia would become the core of the FWLM after getting advanced equipment from the Terran Hegemony in 2525. The Star League Council Edict of 2650 cut down the number of military forces each great house could have. This caused the number of militia units to shrink, but the 10th remained and guarded the Free Worlds League borders. When the act was repealed, the Merrick Militia quickly grew, and by 2760 there were 28 regiments of militia. The forces were set to protect the people of the League and serve the regional governments rather than serving the Captain General directly making the Merrick Militia stand out amongst other House military units as they are not commanded by their central government. The first known base for the unit was on Eleusius in 2765. At the time, they were a medium-weight unit, but this would change as the centuries passed. The 10th gained popularity as they had a strong reputation due to their skill and they were a training unit for many talented soldiers that would serve in the more prestigious FWLM units like the Merrick Guard or Atreian Dragoons. Thus, even soldiers in other units gained respect for the 10th Merrick Militia. The Succession Wars were a devastating time for the Merrick Militia, and the 10th was no exception from it. By the end of the First Succession War, the 10th had been reduced to half strength. However, due to the reputation and training practices, they were over full strength by 2830. They continued to serve with Eleusius as their base, but as the Second Succession War came to a close in 2864, they were once more at half strength. Again, they were quick to rebuild, as their reputation brought many new recruits their way to serve alongside some of the best the Free Worlds League had to offer. The Third Succession War brought challenges to the 10th, and would change how they functioned as a unit. In 2901, the 10th teamed up with the 14th Merrick Militia and successfully took over Sirius. Using fast mechs and good planning, the 10th gained a boost to the reputation on the battlefield. The Merrick Civil War saw various militia units choosing sides. The 10th sided with Janos Merrick and were now based on Thermopolis. They were equipped with many heavy and assault mechs to go along with their standard lighter units, allowing the 10th to use a variety of strategies during the war. They protected the Kalon Industries factory on Thermopolis, as well as battling the revolting forces when the 10th were needed as backup. In the late Third Succession War, the 10th battled the Lyran military on Kallison in 3020. The running Rebels company was made up of Locusts and Hermes Twos, providing speed and mobility that allowed them to defeat a Lyran assault mech force in urban combat. 
After holding off the Lyran attack, the planet was garrisoned by the Falcon's unit of the Silver Hawk Irregulars. After that, the 10th were stationed on Bernardo in 3025, where they would stay for decades. In 3030, Endurian attempted to leave the Free Worlds League. The Endurians joined with the Magistry of Canopus to attack the Capellan Confederation. Janos Merrick started to put together a plan, but suffered a stroke. Thomas Merrick pushed for sanctions against Endurian, but an attack against them would not happen until 3035, when a recovered Janos and his sons, Thomas and Dugan, were all killed by a bomb. Duncan Merrick blamed Andirian and took over as Captain General. Two years later, Thomas Merrick returned with evidence that Andurian hadn't planted the bomb. Duncan was voted out of office, but not charged with the assassination of his uncle and cousin. To avoid political pressures, Duncan Merrick went to the front and led an attack on Zante III. The 10th and 15th Merrick militia dropped on Zante with the headhunter mercenaries. They expected light resistance, but the third defenders of Endurian were joined by the fifth, who had retreated from a previous battle. Despite greater numbers, the Merrick forces were held back because of the Endurian defensive positions. The battle dragged on, with the mercenaries leading probing attacks, while the militia took care of bigger threats. Duncan led the troops towards a decisive battle with the third defenders. The mercenaries were drawn off by local forces, and the battle with the third dragged into street-by-street -street fighting. After pushing too far, Duncan's Orion was shot down, and after ejecting, Duncan Merrick was gunned down by the machine guns of an Andurian Warhammer. With this demoralizing loss, the 10th's colonel, Samuel Garibaldi, took over the task force. Using heavy mechs, the task force breached the line, allowing light mechs to cause havoc behind enemy lines, which gave the Merrick forces a chance to escape. However, the battle took its toll on the 10th. They lost two-thirds of their mechs, but were able to save a majority of their pilots. Due to saving so many pilots, the 10th were able to rebuild and continue the fight. They joined in the final assault on Endurian in 3039, leading to the end of the Endurian secession. As the years passed, the 10th had gained quite a bit of esteem for their actions. They got their nickname of the Hammers at this time and were regarded in the top three of the Merrick Militia by FWLM Command. Colonel Samuel Garibaldi would also get promoted to General and Commander of the entire Merrick Militia. The 10th saw action in Operation Guerrero in 3057. They led the attack on Van Diamond IV with the 23rd Merrick Militia, 3rd Orente Hussars, and 1st Syrian Lancers. It was a long, drawn-out battle, but the planet was eventually ceded to the Free Worlds League at the end of the war. By 3059, the Tenth were looking good with their regiment being fully built up with two battalions using top-of-the-line mechs, solidifying their status in the top three of the Merrick Militia, alongside the First and the Sixth. They had grown enough to have aerospace support, a green armored unit, and mixed infantry that helped expand their tactical options. However, the armor soldiers and infantry did not get along, leading to fights amongst the two groups. By 3065, the 10th had over 80% Star League level tech and about 15% Omni tech. They would continue to guard Bernardo until the early part of the Word of Blake War. As the Free Worlds League started falling apart, the 10th were ordered by Captain General Corin Merrick to invade the Rim Commonality in early 77. The goal of the mission was to force the nation back into the Free Worlds League. As the 10th made their way across the stars, they received a distress signal from Kendall. The message told them that the Marian hegemony had attacked and drove off the Bad Dream mercenaries that were protecting the planet. This led to a turning point with the unit. Force Commander Yoshio Kawamura pulled a bloodless coup against the leadership of the 10th and changed their mission from fighting other Free World's peoples to defending them. Thus, they went to Kendall and drove off the periphery attackers. After that, the 10th was not sure what to do. Part of the unit left for their homeworlds, but many stayed behind with Lieutenant Colonel Kawamura. In late 3077, the planet of Lati started getting attacked by the Marin hegemony. The 10th was called out to strike back at the base world of the 4th Legio on Trondheimel. 
Colonel Kawamura didn't want to provoke the hegemony, so he hired Havoc Inc. to do the attack. But after meeting the drunken mess that was Havoc Inc.'s crew, he called off the attack. Lieutenant Fiona Sans Marcos had a different idea. She suggested using a false flag operation where the 10th disguised themselves as Havoc Inc. The attack was a success and evidence was left behind to lead the 4th Legio towards Lati. This led to a fierce battle, but eventually it ended with a parlay that helped establish respect between the units, thus reducing attacks against Lati. From there, the 10th slowly expanded their defense of the border territory. By 3079, the 10th had a battalion on Kendall, Lati, and Hednesford. Over time, the 10th got worn down to three-quarters strength, but Colonel Kawamura started to bring in other broken units and eager recruits to form up the Merrick Protectors. The 10th Merrick Militia was one of the best units the Merrick Militia has produced. Not only do they have a record of heroism, but they survived long enough to become a new unit with the same mission, protect the worlds of the Free Worlds League, even if the Free Worlds League doesn't exist. However, the story of the Merrick Protectors will be saved for the next faction briefing. There are many heroes that came out of the Tenth as they defended the people of the Free Worlds League. Samuel Garibaldi, a legacy Tenth Commander whose grandfather was the commander of the Tenth years before. By 3039, he was transferred to the XO position of the first Merrick Militia. By 3050, he was the commander of the entire Merrick Militia. He piloted an awesome. Symington Beauregard Lee joined in 3020 and led the running rebels company made up of locusts and Hermes II mechs that held off a Lyran heavy mech unit. He was promoted to the commander of the 10th in 3050, but retired before the decade was up. He piloted a locust. Cindy Mayer a ruthless woman who used her connections to get command of the 10th. But unlike most nepotistic soldiers, she had the skills to back up her status. She got command in 57 and pushed the unit forward, but didn't get along well with her XO, Yoshio Kawamura. Juliet Morietti. By 3059, she had become the commander of the 3rd Battalion. She stuck with the unit and sided with Lieutenant Colonel Kawamura during the coup. After that, she became the commander of the 2nd Merrick Protectors, stationed on Westover. Yoshio Kawamura Born in the Draconis Combine, but became a member of the Merrick Militia in the 3050s. He took command from Cindy Mayer in 3077 to lead the 10th in defending the border. He is the founder of the Merrick Protectors. His battle mech is unknown. The 10th Merrick Militia had two distinct eras in terms of armament. In the early days, they were a medium weight unit, but by the Merrick Civil War, they were upgraded to a mixed weight unit. Each company was designated to different specialties, with the 9th Company being a Swiss army knife that could assist all other companies when needed. The job of the 10th was to act as shock troops and assault planets with mixed unit tactics. They often hit hard with heavier units and then used lighter units and armor to finish their enemies off. The unit variety of the 10th makes them a perfect choice for those mech commanders who want a variety of options built into their chosen mech force, as well as options for armor, infantry, and aircraft. It is sad there is no fiction focused on the 10th, as their actions in every war they fought in make them quite the heroic unit. However, there are plenty of source books to tell those stories, and enough information to build a squad for any era. I took on the 10th Merrick Militia after I learned that the 18th and the 10th both became the founders of the Merrick Protectors. However, as I conducted my research, I noticed that the vast majority of the Merrick Militia have almost no lore. Just a few notes here and there for a handful of Militia units. I'm glad to have found as much information as I have for this series of videos. Thus, do not expect videos for every one of the 40 different Militia units. That being said, I will be covering a few more of them in the future because there is plenty of history surrounding the Merrick Militia.
The 10th Merrick Militia has a long history, and painting up a set isn't a bad idea, but the red accent only version of the paint style has one major problem. The 10th can't substitute as other units due to their modified paint job. I'm not trying to discourage mech commanders from painting up a squad. I'm just pointing out an unfortunate reality of making a team of 10th Merrick Militia as opposed to generic Merrick Militia units. While I did have some simple suggestions for the 18th Merrick Militia pack, I believe that the 10th Merrick Militia pack should be a little bit different due to the amount of units they have access to. So here are my suggestions. And add pilot cards for Samuel Garibaldi and Symington Beauregard Lee. Next time, I'll be covering the Merrick Protectors and continuing the story of the 10th Merrick Militia as they evolved into the 1st Merrick Protectors. After that, I'll be going back to mercenary units. I'd like to thank all my subscribers, new and old, because you helped me finally surpass 500 subs, and that means so much to me. May your weapons stay hot, and your reactors stay cool. Until next time, I'll see you at the Tavern.